All right, in this video, we're going to talk about mass. We're going to compare that to weight. Because these two generally produce a confusion among students. So let's begin with this exercise. Let's say that you go to uh, a lab and the instructor tells you, take this eraser and weigh it. So what you would do is you would put it on a scale, right? in the lab and then you would realize that the scale reveals to you a quantity and for this eraser the quantity would be in grams so here's the confusion the instructor has told you to weigh the eraser using the word weigh as a verb This implies, at least by the look of it, that you're looking for the weight. Look, weigh, weight, right? But even though the instructor has asked you to weigh the eraser, you come back with a value that has units of mass, grams. So this is confusing. So we're going to try to figure out what's going on and clarify this. Okay, so let's define them. So what's a mass? A mass is basically it's a unif it's, it's a universal quantity. Okay? Which means that the mass of an object on the earth is the same as the mass of the same object on the moon for example or on Mars. Okay? So mass is a quantity that doesn't change with respect to where the object is. Okay? We could say that it is how much it's an amount, right? How much of an object exists. Okay? All right. Now, let's leave it at that. What is weight? The weight is a force. So a weight is actually a force, okay? And it is a force that that a mass experiences due to the gravitational pull of another mass. Now for engineering purposes and in general we assume that this other mass is the earth. Okay, So two different things. A mass is a quantity that enables to figure out or to ex express or characterize how much of an object exists. Okay. A mass, the mass doesn't change regardless of the, uh, of the location of the object. The weight is a totally different thing. It's a force that a mass experiences due to the gravitational pull of another mass. Okay? So the weight of an object on the Earth is not the same as the weight of an object on the Moon because the gravitational pull on the Earth is larger than that on the Moon. Right now, the fundamental equation, which I'm going to write here, is the weight is equal to mass. So the weight of an object is equal to the mass of that object times the gravitational acceleration of the other mass. For us, generally, it's the Earth. That means that this is 9.81 meters per second squared. If it were the Moon, it would be lower. I don't remember what it is, but it's lower than 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay. So we're going to now uh, talk about units. First we're going to talk about SI units. Alright, so what are the units of mass in SI? The units of mass are kilograms. What are the units of weight? Which are basically the units of force. Well, we're going to start with this one kilogram force. 
Now, you may not have heard of this unit, or maybe you've heard little about it, but it's a very valid and valuable and actually used quite a lot unit, okay? Kilogram and kilogram force. So, what is a kilogram force? Well, that's, it's a unit of a force. Therefore, it's a kilogram, which is the unit of mass, times g, which is the gravitational pull, right? Weight equal mg in terms of units. Which is to say, this is a kilogram times 9.81 meters per second squared, right? So if I just organize this, I get 9.81 kilogram meter per second squared. Okay, so a kilogram force is 9.81 kilograms per times meter per second squared. This unit right here is called a newton. Okay, so that's a second unit for force. The first one is kilogram force, the other one is newton. We generally use newtons when we deal with SI units for force. We generally use newtons. I would say that we use kilogram force less but it's still a valuable unit. One kilogram force is 9.81 newtons. So let's do an example. Let's say that the mass of an object, which is a little cube, okay, let's say that's two kilograms. And we want to know the weight. Very simple, right? Well, the weight is mg, which is two kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared, which is equal to 19.62 kilograms meter per second squared, which is equal to 9.62 newtons. Oops, there we go, okay. Two kilograms, 9.81 uh, times 9.81 meter per second squared, it's 19.62 kilogram meter per second squared, which is 19.62 newtons. That's the weight. That's the mass, two kilograms, that's the weight. Now, how do we express this in kilogram force? Because that's the other unit, right? Well, notice that one kilogram force is 9.81 newtons. So, if we divide 19.62 newtons by 9.81, kilogram force, uh, sorry, 19.62 newtons by 9.81 newtons, then we get two kilograms force. So look at what happens. The mass is two kilograms and the weight is two kilogram force. So two and two, the numbers are the same, the value, but the units are different, kilogram and kilogram force. They're totally different things. This is a mass and this is a weight or a force. And obviously in terms of newtons, it's a totally different number. Okay, good. All right, so what happens with English units? Well, let's do the same exact thing. Um, units. English or Imperial, right? So, mass and weight. For mass, the unit is pound. And for weight, the unit is pound. So you have seen this before. You have expressed masses and forces with the same unit before, I suppose, as a student. 10 pounds, 20 pounds, is that a mass or is that a force? Well, the best way to deal with this issue is to recognize that when you're referring to a force with units of pound, you're really skipping the last word of the unit, which is force. Pound force. So we should get in the habit of using that unit, this complete unit, for weight and force, instead of just saying pound, because that's misleading. Pound should be for mass. Pound force should be for weight and force. Just like kilogram is for mass, and kilogram force is for weight and, and obviously other forces. Okay, so, same thing, right? What's a pound force? Pound force is a pound times G, which is a pound 
times 32.2 feet per second squared. This is the gravitational acceleration in, S, in, uh, in English units, right? If I organize, I get 32.2 pound foot per second squared. Same as, we, same as above. Same approach. Okay? Now let's do the example. The mass of the object is 2 pounds. What's the weight? Well, the weight is equal to the mass times g, 32.2 feet per second squared, which is to say 64.4 pound foot per second squared. Okay? Now, remember we want to express this as pound force, right? And we know that a pound force is 32.2 pound foot per second squared. So if we divide, then we get 2 pound force. Okay, now, same thing happens, look. The mass is 2 pounds, the weight is 2 pound force. Same number, 2. But the units are different. This is a mass and this is a force. Therefore, they're totally different things. It just so happens that they have the same numerical value. Okay? There's one important difference between the SI approach or SI units and English units. For SI, we have one unit for mass, kilogram, but we have two units for weight or force, newtons and kilogram force, two units. We can choose which one we would like to use, of course, right? For English units, we have one unit of mass and one unit of weight. One and one. Now there's another uh, unit here that we have not included, which is for mass, which is a slug. Okay? But nobody really, I would say, uses that unit anymore. Uh, so we are going to stick with the most common ones, one for mass, pound, and one for weight, or force, pound force. Another thing to say here is that clearly these weights that we found in these examples are the weights of the objects on Earth because we use G, the gravitational acceleration of the Earth. This is the weight on the Earth. This one, the same. The weight on the Earth because we use the G associated with the Earth. 32.2 feet per second squared. So finally we go back to the eraser, right? So the instructor said, weigh the eraser. So here's the scale with the display. And here's the eraser. The display revealed some value in grams. So what is it that you're doing really when you're placing an object on a scale? You're determining its mass. The scale is actually revealing to you the mass why so? Well, the scale has a force sensor in here. So when you place an object on the scale, the scale measures the force with which the object pushes on the top plate. And that force is converted by the scale to the mass of the object. What do you think that force is? The weight. So the scale measures the weight The scale's sensor measures the weight and then the scale computes and displays the mass. So when the instructor says, go weigh this, the instructor basically is asking you to determine the mass or to come back with the value of the mass so I think it's important maybe maybe it's a little bit of a uh, too extreme but if we were 
to be clear, we would never ask students or anyone to weigh something. We would just say, determine the mass. That way it's clear, right? You go and determine the mass. That's, that's what you're doing. Finally, density is the mass of an object divided by the volume of the object. And the unit weight is the weight of the object divided by the volume of the object. Kilogram per meter cubed. Kilonewton per meter cubed. Pound per foot square, uh, foot cubed, sorry. Pound force per foot 